Assignment of three krills, and on my second kill, I get a samurai killed. What is this luck? Two samurai and spears, one samurai killed in 76 kill count. I'm probably the luckiest player ever at Sammy. So now I know what this video is going to be about, the grotesque guardians. We're going to do 172 KC of this boss, and as always, I've never done it before. So my current cash pile is 72 mil, and I will be forced to use a ranged and melee at the grotesque guardians. So this is the time I'm going to be buying Bando. So I'm going to buy Bando's chestplate and the tassets, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of the switches, because that's a lot of switches to use. The carols, the blowpipe with Bando's and full melee into ranged setup and all that. But uh, I want to buy the Bando's- oh, the tassets isn't buying. Um, but I want to buy the Bandos regardless, because Bandos is one of those uh, things you really want for Slayer as well. So it is just great to have it in general. So let's see if it buys for 30 mil. Yep, 29.2 mil. So I still have 23 million left, and my melee gear is now looking real great. So here you can see I have the melee switch and the ranged switch. Uh, I'm bringing a combat potion, a super combat potion, a ranging potion, four prey potions, and then the rest food and one stamina just to get here. So I'm marking these tiles because you we'll see in the next clip. Okay, so this is my first attempt. If you're wondering, by the way, in my inventory what those eight uh, teleport tablets are, they teleport you pretty much just to the cannabis bank, so it is very easy to uh, res bank and all that and just run back here. No need to go to Edgeville and then, you know, use the ferry ring to get back and all that. So it's very smooth to uh, use them, they're like 5k each. So now when uh, both of these spawn, I will uh, turn on protect from range and I will run to this square right here that I marked. And as soon as I get hit from Dusk, the other one, I will walk over to this one. And not always, but uh, some of the time it will get stuck like it is now. It's really weird how it's working, because sometimes it looks like it's going to unstuck itself, and it just doesn't. It just walks in and stuck, uh, makes itself stuck again for no reason. But um, yeah, here we go. That's pretty much the first phase. Extremely easy. I think it uh, goes into the next phase when it's at 250 HP. Uh, you turn on your melee gear. And then all you have to do is uh, stand at least two squares away from all these beams. The different beams, I'm not sure if they do uh, different types of damage, if they do more damage or less damage. Uh, and then now uh, you have to hit this guy once or twice. And then as soon as you see him starting his animation of, uh, well, he turns yellow, you need to run away for quite a bit. Um, otherwise you will get hit for a lot of damage. You get knocked into the wall and you take like 30 damage. Uh, also, there are rocks that fall, you can see them right now on the screen. If you get hit by them, you get stunned for a very long time, it's like 5 seconds, I think. And um, it also deals 16, 20 damage to you. So you just hit him all the way, and now he's 225 HP, and he transitions into the next phase. And uh, now you turn on ranged gear again, and I'm screwing up a lot on uh, where I'm supposed to stand. And now you do the same thing, you walk here and you try to stuck him. But now, there will be three orbs that spawn, these energy spheres. So what you want to go and do is pick them up, because uh, the longer it takes for you to pick them up, the more damage they will deal to you when you eventually pick them up, up to 20. And uh, if you don't pick them up, they will uh, go back to the boss after a while and heal him for 90 HP. If you pick them up instantly, it will be 2 damage, if you take a bit longer, it will be 10 damage, and then after a long time of uh, not picking them up, it will be 20 damage. Also, um, that big ball that you saw, that uh, Dawn threw out, the one I'm killing right now, if that hits you or lands one square away from you, you will get frozen. It won't deal damage, but you can't attack and you can't move for like 3 seconds. So now you want to protect magic, and... Um, walk out of that circle. So all you have to do really is when you get put into that circle there's one opening. If you click anywhere outside the circle you will walk out of it. The only exception is if you get put towards a wall there will still be an opening and you can stand in that opening but because you can't walk out of it if the opening is just into a wall you can actually stand in that opening and you will be fine. You won't take any damage, but you can't walk out of the area. So here you can see I'm about to get my first kill on the gargoyles. And yes, this was my first overall attempt and I did manage to kill it. And the kill time was 2 minutes and 51 seconds. And the loot was uh, not, not the greatest, but I will have to say for a first attempt, I was really happy with how I did. I probably took a bit too much damage in uh, well the transition phase because I got hit by the... Uh, 
uh, lasers or whatever that you have to avoid a few too many times but uh, in general not too bad second kill incoming it seems like I will be able to do like four kills in one trip and I'm just waiting really now for my fifth kill because after that I can instantly spawn them without having to watch a cinematic so this is going to be my fifth kill and I'm on my second trip now and I brought a fire cape uh, actually as a swap so I don't only have the Avas accumulator so I actually have a cape swap now because I realized that uh, doing the swaps here is not very hard. Uh, there, you have a lot of time to do it. So there we go, that's the 5 kill count done. And now I have the quick start option here, so the bosses will instantly spawn and each kill will be a bit faster. So I'm actually mixing a lot of things up. I went and got my tentacle whip for a bit more damage and I got my DDS as well for a spec weapon. And I banked my Bandos chest plate. And I'm only using Carol's top and Banos tassets now and seeing how it works. So just an early look at uh, the loot. So 12 kills and 408k. So not the best profit, but not too bad. So I actually did an experiment here. And you will see that after this transition phase, I actually tried to just completely surg the Dawn boss after this phase and try to kill it before the orbs would heal it. And you can see now that I'm going to hit some really, really nice hits. Um, 15, 12, and you can see the orbs there uh, flying out and I'm getting some really good 24 hits, another 24 hits. And I was like, yeah, I can probably just kill it without the orbs actually getting full potential and then healing him. Uh, but as you can see, when it goes to zero HP, it doesn't die and I can't run forward to it and finish it off because it still needs to get healed by the orbs. And so you still need to pick them up or just let them heal him. So I'm actually going to sell my BGS right now and my Samra Kilt to make some upgrades to help me kill the Gargoyles a bit faster or <laughs> Grotesque Guardians. So what I'm going to buy is Senite Jewelry. And I feel like it's something I should have already bought but I've had other things in mind to buy. So here we go. Okay, the Samra Kilt is actually not selling for 150k under price. Hopefully it will not be uh, too bad. Oh no. That's not looking good. 200k underprice is not selling. Let's uh, try that low. Okay, now it's also 4.1 mil. It's not too bad. And uh, now I can buy Senites. I think 38 mil should be enough. 16.2 uh, mil, 16.5 mil maybe. Yeah, I still have 21 mil. And I don't think the uh, Despair, I think it's called. Necklace. Let's see where it is. Uh, Anguish. Yeah, not, not Despair. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same price. So let's see if uh, that one buys for 16.5 mil. Okay, it does not. I'm not sure why it would sell for... It wouldn't sell for the same, because I think it costs exactly the same amount to make them, but... Uh, yeah, I will still have at least 5 mil or 4 mil left after I buy the Anguish necklace. So, I will have... Pretty much, I think they are the best necklaces in the game after this. So, that's going to be a good switch to bring to uh, the Grotesque Guardians as well. In the transition phase, I've actually taken a lot of unnecessary damage because I keep forgetting something. So I'm going to tell you guys about it now. You can see on the ground the animation of it, it disappears now. But if you walk over it, you still take damage. You have to wait all the way until the animation is completely gone. So this is my fastest kill to date. And it is just above two minutes. And you can see in my inventory, I brought a lot more switches now compared to how it used to be. And I'm on 74 kill count. So I'm a bit more experienced and I can get about five kills every single trip. I'm actually not using the DDS spec that much. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm using it in this clip. But uh, I'm probably doing that because I want to get as fast of a kill as possible. But um, in general, using the blowpipe spec here is not bad at all. Because if you do that every single time, if you hit pretty decently, you can get one or two more kills in every single trip. Just because the healing from it is really nice. And here I screwed up real bad. Uh, but still doesn't really matter for my kill time because uh, just taking damage doesn't do much for my kill potential. So here we go, some pretty good DDS specs, 46, 10. And so the boss is like 50 HP now, I think uh, from transitioning. So it's going to transition. And I think I'm at like one minute right now. So I'm doing very good in time. And uh, after this phase, I'm going to surg the second boss again. You can see on the circles, I wait all the way until that uh, they're completely gone before I go to another area. So now I pick these orbs up and they spawned extremely lucky for me. Like if they spawn like that, yeah, you have a fastest kill potential for sure. Because picking up those orbs can really drain your time. Because if you don't pick them up, well, the boss is going to heal for 90 HP and you can't surg it down. And uh, if you have to run all over the room, that can drain a lot of your time as well. So here we go. I'm doing really well. I mean, I've barely hit any zeros this, uh, this entire kill. 
So now you just, you can see you click outside the circle and you just walk out, pray magic and piety and you just circle the boss. Got a really good spec there as well. And I just hit really consistently here with my uh, super combat potion and my uh, torture amulet is doing a lot. Same with the anguish uh, necklace. Both of those purchases were really, really useful and I can actually feel a difference with them. So here we go. This is going to be my number 75 kill and my first really good time, I would say. Two minutes for this boss is uh, probably one of the better times you can actually get. Oh, I was about to go 100 dry on anything, but there we go, that's the Granite Hammer Drop. It's worth 1 mil, and it's actually the second most valuable, or I think third most valuable, after the jar and I don't know what the last thing is, but it's something worth 4 mil. It looks a lot huger than I thought it would be, but 1 mil drop is very good. The Slayer experience from this is actually really good. I mean, I've killed soon 100 of them, this is going to be my number 100, and every single kill is 1350 experience. As you can see right there, so I've gained 130,000 Slayer experience so far just from doing these 100 kills. I actually just missed it, but 96 hit points, only uh, 3 more levels until my first 99. No way, dude. <laughs> only like, what, 20 kills later? Another Granite Hammer. It's 1 in 750 and it's actually one of the more, as I said, valuable items. Another level, 89 ranged. I'm actually getting a really good ranged experience. I mean, if you look on the right side, I'm getting consistent drops. Another level coming in, 90 defense. The experience here, as I said, is not very bad. Oh, I'm just barely not 115 combat. So I'm on my last kill now, and I would say this was very enjoyable to do, actually. I mean, the drops are maybe not the most amazing, but the experience definitely is good. You can see on my counter I'm almost 91 Slayer, and it took me roughly 9 hours to do all these kills, with about 20 kills per hour done. So unfortunately, Runelight missed the first 3 kills on my counter here, but that is 10.2 million from 169 kills of the gargoyle bosses, the grotesque guardians. But in my inventory here you can see all the loot that I got, but uh, for example the mushroom potatoes and some of the prayer, or pretty much all of the prayer potions and some saradomin brews, I mean I think I got all the saradomin brews out, but uh, I used some of them during the fights. I mean if I got some prayer potions or I got some mushroom potatoes, I pretty much just ate them right there because it pr could uh, prolong my trip. So obviously I would do that, but uh, let's see what all of this is worth in a normal price check. 9.3 mil and of course the hammers are worth quite a lot i mean they actually dropped in price since i got them so they dropped about 12k during the night actually because i killed a lot of them in uh, one day so that is pretty unfortunate hopefully they will actually sell for a decent price if they sell for like 500k i'm going to feel pretty bad but uh, let's sell all of this and uh, see what it's actually coming out to so I only have the hammers now left to sell, and by the way, if you're wondering what the granite dust is, it's a non-tradable item that you can use on your cannonballs to make them into granite cannonballs, which uh, makes them a bit stronger. I think uh, the max hit of the cannonballs goes from 30 to 35, but as I said, you can't trade it, so it's only for myself. I'm not really using a cannon now anyway, so kind of useless until the future. So let's now sell first one and I'm going to put it at like 750k just because the item is dropping and see if it sells. Okay it sells so it's not going to sell for 500k. Okay it's pretty much um, just below the price it's actually at so if I just do minus 5% it's going to sell instantly. There we go 973k. Not sure what the hammer is actually good for in general but yeah, that is pretty much exactly what I price checked before, a bit less I think, but uh, 9.3 mil from 170 to uh, grotesque guardians. But that's going to do it for this video, if you did like the video please leave a like and if you want to see more of my content then make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you want to know how I actually think the boss is in general, I would say that it is a very easy and afk -able boss to do, I mean you barely have to think at all, and I mean on my first attempt I killed it, it was not the same at all with uh, some other bosses that I've done. I mean, some bosses I died like 3-4 times before I got my first kill, but this boss, it is actually kind of hard to die. I mean, even if you fail most of the things, except maybe in the transition phase, if you stand in the uh, light things that deals damage to you, yeah, you can die pretty fast, but other than that, it's very hard to get KO'd. I mean, you really have to screw up something to get killed in this fight. So it was very easy to do and the loot was not the greatest. But I mean, if a boss that was really easy to do uh, gave insane loot, it would not really be fair. 
So I would say it's a pretty nice boss to do and the Slayer experience definitely per hour is probably worth it I would say. So hope you guys did enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one guys. Take care.